I talked to Cheryl about Julia and Jerome and about Olivia and about everything that happened, but it was way, 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 way back when she knew him, Robert. It wasn't recent. When did she tell you all this? She told me all this after you broke up. Why? What, do you think that I was keeping it from you and I knew about it all the time? I didn't say that. You didn't have to say that. You know, I think you're getting paranoid. The way I understand it, you haven't even stopped being mad at Cheryl long enough for her to tell you what did happen with Julian. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me. You aren't listening. Look, I'm standing eight feet from you. Talk to me. It was quite simple. Okay, Julian and Cheryl were quite an item when they were in graduate school. And she had no idea that he was part of the mob. I mean, I don't think she probably even knew what a mob was. The eternal innocent. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. She had no idea that Julian was involved until after he dumped her. And I think that he dumped her just to protect her from her involvement in the mob. Or to protect them from her, in case she should have an outbreak of honesty. Hmm? Exactly. And then, Robert, then, after she was feeling so bad, her heart was absolutely broken. And then Julian was killed. And somehow, everybody in Port Charles got involved. Mm. And the rest, they say, is history. Except that none of this really has much point. Well, why don't you tell me what the point is? Well, I'm sorry about what happened in, in, in Cheryl's youth. I mean, uh, I can understand her lying about that part of her life. I mean, there's portions of my life she's never going to know about. Well, I don't think any of us are going to write our autobiographies, Robert. She lied about her past with mob figures that I happen to be investigating. And she lied about Olivia and who Olivia is. Yes, she knew that you would drop her if she told you about it, and heavens to Betsy, she was right. You found out, and she hasn't even had a chance to open her mouth because she is history in your book, right? I think you've got this twisted around a little bit. She could have helped me, but she chose to help herself. That is not true. She didn't choose to help herself. She, she chose not to tell you because she knew that you would be doing exactly what you're doing right now. Well, what are we fighting for? You're my buddy, my pal. You have nothing to do with this. I know that. And if you would think about it, neither is this Cheryl. Read my lips. Olivia Jerome is threatening my daughter and my ex-wife's life. Now, it's either because she's as mad as a meat axe or she wants control of the mob, or probably both. But as far as I'm concerned, Cheryl's activities are part of the reason why Robert is being threatened, and I'm not saying any more. And neither are you. She had no you, idea. You are not saying... Okay, here it is. Cheese sandwiches, cocoa, and marshmallow. Oh, that was great. I wish I could, but I've already made dinner plans, sweetheart. Uh, Sean? Oh, absolutely, Sean. Well, have a good time. Thank you. Give him a kiss. I will. Mwah. You have fun? Goodbye. Very nice to see you, Sam. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Well, I'm in no hurry. Oh, I'm sure you're not, but you can't do it nonetheless. Don't leave anything. I shan't. Daddy. Huh? What about this one? Yucky oh. Space Invaders. One of my faves, but uh, listen, love, you'll have to play my part. I've got to try to track your mother down. Okay. Well, go ahead and call her, and we'll set up the board. Okay. Sam, both of us will play, you know, two of them. They'll make it more interesting. Okay, but you're going to have to explain everything about this game to me. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you, uh, to, uh, whatever. Well, why didn't you stay? I mean, you've been in this mood for weeks now. Why don't you stay and talk about Cheryl? Here, let me get this. I hope it's really pouring. Oh, it is coming a flood out there. You cannot yeah. believe. Oh. Honey, how are you doing? I have been so worried about you, I can't even think. I'm fine. Really, I am. Oh, oh, and if you're worried about me drinking, I'm not. It never even crossed my mind. I'm not a bit concerned about your drinking. I know you're not going to self-destruct. I'm just worried about this whole Robert stuff. Now, I have been over having a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with this man about you. You didn't get very far, I take it. Not to the edge of town, I'm afraid. Well, I'm not surprised. Well, I don't know. You know, I tried my best to find out what it was that he was the most angry about. I honestly truly think he could have gotten over it, you know, your hiding, your past about Julian with him, if it hadn't been for that stupid woman kidnapping Robin the other day, it's just... Well, Robin is the most important thing in his life. I know that, but you didn't kidnap her. I mean, he shouldn't blame you for this. Cheryl, I believe, I honestly and truly believe with all my heart that when he calms down, he is going to realize that he's putting too much of the blame on your back. Well, even if he doesn't, 
You tried, and I love you for it. Hey, it's the least I could do. I don't want to be the only happy woman in the world, you know. Speaking of happy, Sean came over. He's really terrific. Oh, I know. Isn't he wonderful? I am so lucky to have him. <gasps> oh, uh, well, we have to go over business, right? Business? Yeah, well, uh, we have to decide whether or not it's feasible feasible to put Colton back on the air if he's cleared. Is that going to happen? Well, Sean thinks it's a maybe. But anyway, why don't you come to dinner with Sean and myself? Oh, no, really, I can't. Oh, come on. I mean, the best thing for a broken heart is to work, you know? I know that better than anybody. Yeah, so do I, and I have a briefcase full, but I'd spoil dinner for all of us, honestly. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me get my aqualongs back on, get back out into this flood of a water thing, and I will talk to you manana, okay? All right. Okay. Don't drown. I'll try not to. each other and then we started talking about getting married but that was it for julian he wouldn't do it because he couldn't ask me to be the wife of a mobster look i've about had it up to here with saint julian i get it all the time from lavery i don't believe him there's no reason why i should believe you so you're gonna throw away everything we have together you never told me cheryl and you should have but I, I could never believe you again i am telling you the truth now it's too little too late there we had it in bright color a nice shot of little Cheryl with Julian Giraud Victor's son she had no way to defend herself no admitted she lied at which point I walked out. And there's nothing she can do to make you change your mind, is there? Look, no trust, no love. I'm like that. Well, have you stopped to think why she lied to you like this? I mean, she can be reasonably certain that one day you would find out about it. I've got no idea. She, she lied to you? Because she knows the way you feel about the mob, and she was terrified if she told you that she would lose you. I'm the second person today who said that. You are so stubborn. I mean, you're only hurting yourself. Who else told you this? Tiffany. See? Two women in your life who know you better than anybody. So that should tell you something. Look. She lied to me, right? Not once, but several times. I'm not going to deal with that. Well, I think you ought to. You should be compassionate, at least a little bit. And you've told me this often enough. I mean, look at us. You and I, we wasted years when you found out what I've been hiding. Years. Six years before you would even listen to what I had to say. I don't know, can you afford to throw away any more of your life without a woman you love? <laughs> 